Now let's see the group audit. Now, when we are auditing the group, first of all, we need to know a few terminologies. What do I mean by group? Group includes parents and subsidiaries. So make sure that we are ready. So we are talking about component. Component includes the parent, subsidiaries. Only parents, subsidiaries within a group. But also components can also include associates, joint arrangement. So associate and joint arrangement, so for example the joint venture would be outside the group. Okay, so that's very important there. So because the associates, we are not consolidating the associate on a line by line basis because for example we hold more than 20% of shares but less than 50% of another entity. And also the joint arrangement and outside the group. Now, if we are the auditor for the group, we are called group auditor. Okay. And if I were the auditor for the subsidiary, I'm called the component auditor. If I'm the auditor for the parent, which means I'm the group auditor, so can I be the auditor for the parent at the same time for the subsidiaries? Yes. So sometimes the group auditor, the group auditor can also be a component auditor. A component auditor can sometimes be the auditor, the group auditor, if you're also, you're also responsible for auditing the parent's company, for example. Now, how about for group management? Group management is the management team or the directors in a client's company responsible for the consolidated account, or the group account if you like. However, for components management, it's for individual account preparations. So for example, for the subsidiaries account preparations. Now, once we've understood these terminologies, let's see the ISA 600 is the special considerations for the group audit, including the work of component auditors. Now, what sort of things do we need to cover here? First of all, we need to assess the reliability of component auditors before uh, we work with them. So for example, whether or not they've got a license. And then the factors to be considered before we accept as the group auditor to be responsible for the audit of the client's company. And then we need to assess significant component. So for example, if the component or the subsidiary's account has been materially misdated, whether or not we should qualify the opinion or the group's audit report. And then we also need to determine the group auditor's responsibilities and the level of involvement in the component audit as well. And then with regards to the communications, make sure that this is a two-way communication that from the group auditor to the component auditor and vice versa is the two-way communication. And finally, we also recap on the how to consolidate the account by uh, going through the working papers and the procedures uh, related to that and how we check that. Now, first of all then, how to assess the reliability of the component auditor. So think about it in this way. If you accept as the group auditor role and what you need to do is to think about whether or not the component auditors are performing well. So how can you assess their reliability? First of all, you need to consider whether or not they are competent, whether or not they've got experience and understanding the IFRS or the International Financial Reporting Standards. Second, you also need to assess their qualifications as well, so whether or not they are licensed auditors. So in practice, we simply obtain their curriculum vitae or the CV um, to assess the experience as well as the qualifications. And third, we also need to assess the ethical standards that they are following. So probably the subsidiary inside the group may be based in overseas countries. So if this is the case then, the component auditors may be following a completely different ethical standard 
done the group auditor. So make sure that if there are any differences in ethics, and make sure that you will do further work to solve that gap. And then you also need to see the auditing standard that a component auditor are using when they are auditing the components in the group, whether or not there will be differences in that, particularly with regards to quality control. And make sure that you've identified the differences and also the audit report format may be quite different. Okay, so what you need to do is to assess that carefully and to determine whether or not you will need to do additional work or trying to rework that audit of the components later on. And finally, you need to know what authority regulates the auditor and how the auditor can be confirmed that they are objective in some way. So monitoring is particularly important here. Now, if standing from the group auditor's point of view, if I were to conclude that component auditors are reliable and therefore we can place more reliance on their work, if this is not the case, less reliance will be placed uh, on their work. So with regards to the exam question, usually uh, with regards to group audit, in assessing the audit risk, uh, the standardised answer can be used here. So, for example, in evaluating the audit risk, if the component uses component auditors to audit the account, there should be audit risk because the group auditor will be relying to some extent of their, of their work. So, therefore, the response will be the careful planning will be needed to reduce that risk to a minimum. Okay, so, uh, if you're given a case where the component auditor is auditing the components, for example, subsidiary, just place that paragraph into your answer. Now, the second area in the ISO 600 would be the acceptance as group auditor. What are the factors that you need to consider? First of all, you need to consider whether or not the client's integrity is an issue. And then, considering the ethics, considering whether or not you are competent in doing the work, you're capable of doing the work, so in other words, whether or not you've got enough team members, whether or not you've got enough time, and whether or not you're able to travel overseas, you can have that passport and visa and so on. And also you need to consider the remaining matters, particularly the legal issues. Because usually, if you're the group auditor, so usually 9 out of 10, the, the company may be replacing the predecessor auditor with your firm. And if this is the case, and whether or not the predecessor auditor or the previous auditor has been correctly removed, if this is not the case, then uh, you're unlikely to accept as the uh, group auditor. You need to consider that. So, for example, considering the client's integrity, what we need to do is to perform the due diligence procedures. So, for example, identifying the changes for auditors, whether or not there will be an opinion shopping issue. For example, if the client's company is not happy with the previous auditor's opinion and changes yours, and we perform due diligence on that. If this is the case, then reject to be as an auditor. And also we need to confirm whether or not the client's company is involved in the criminal activities, so for example, the money laundering activities. And whether or not there will be management imposed limitations as well. As uh, so for example, if the management says you can't check this area, you can't check that area. If this is the case, they simply decline the, 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 the engagement. And also whether or not the previous year's audit report was modified. Okay, if the previous auditor is not happy with the account, they modify the audit, audit report and to qualify the opinion. And we need to see what reasons. If the reasons are not fair, so for example, if the management is not performing a good job and it's very highly likely that the client's integrity would be an issue. And also we need to determine whether group auditor can involve in a component when auditing their company. So involve 
with the component auditor. If the answer for that is no, so for example, I'm the group auditor from one of the accounting firms, and you are the component auditor from another accounting firm, when I require you to submit your working papers for my review, you simply decline. If this is the case, then that will be simply a waste of time. And what we need to do from a commercial point of view, we may need to think about whether or not the fees are enough to cover those costs and waste. And also we need to consider the ethics consideration. So for example, whether or not we host shares of your competitor, which may constitute the conflict of interest. So before we accept as the group auditor, surely I will need to dispose of your competitor's shares, probably. And also, or, or, or to remove the members from this particular engagement. And also, any threats to objectivity, for example, to self-interest. Okay, so we need to be ready for that. Uh, so if we hold significant shares uh, of your competitor's company or on your uh, parent's company, and we need to be aware of that. And also, we need to perform the professional clearance procedure by talking by communicating with the previous auditor about any matters that need to bring us to, bring to us uh, uh, attention. If the answer for that is yes, and we need to see what matters, if the matter is okay, so we can accept as the auditor. If the matter is not okay, so for example, the client's company is involved in illegal activity or the management integrity will be an issue, so we should not accept as the group auditor. Okay, so. Make sure that we are ready for that. The remaining matter here, we need to focus on according to ISA 210 for the preconditions of your audit. So make sure that if I were to accept as an auditor, management will be responsible for preparing the FS and for the internal controls. And also, it granted us with access to all information for audit purposes. So if these preconditions, including the management preparing FS, responsible for internal controls and so on, if these are met, okay, we are happy to be as the auditor, okay, group auditor if you like. Now, it's very important that we understand a particular concept related to group audit is to calculate the materiality. Think about it this way. So we are in the group here. In the group, we prepare the group financial statement. And inside, we also have got the component company um, preparing the individual financial statements as well. And of course, when we prepare the group financial statement, it's the combination of all components financial statements all together. So we need to see if there's been error happening in the components entity. If that error, of course, we need to see whether or not they will also affect the group financial statements as well. The basic rule for this is that, first of all, the first test is to see whether or not the component is financially significant to a group. So one of the criteria takes place, and we can confirm that the component is financially significant. So for example, it's more than 15% of the total revenue in the group and uh, the more than 15% of the profit before tax and more than 15% of the total asset. So for example, if the components company, for example, the revenue is $150 and the group's revenue is $1,000. If this is the case then, if I were to take 150, divide this into by 1,000, that will account for 15%. So we can confirm that this is financially significant. So financially significant simply means if there is material misstatement in the component company's financial statement, it will also be a material misstatement in a group. So 
we will qualify our audio opinion on the group's final statement on the group audio report if the material misstatement is not resolved, is not dealt with properly in the component uh, company's financial statement. Okay, it's a very, very important concept here. However, if I can conclude that a component is not financially significant, I will also need to go through the test number two there. So test number two says, the components account is still material to a group if the item is more than 0.5% of a group's revenue, five, more than 5% of a group's profit before tax, more than 1% of a group's total offset. Okay, so that means, so for example, if I were to uh, take this example here, the components financial statements for revenue in total would simply be $100. $100 accounting for only 10% of the total revenue of the group. It seems that it's not financially significant. And we spot that material misstatement in the component uh, company's financial statement. So for example, inside that P&O, the material misstatement, let's say, is $30. So we now need to go through the text number two. We take that material misstatement from the components company's financial statement of 30 and divide this by $1,000 of the total group's revenue. And we need to see whether or not there's more than 0.5% or not. If I were to take that uh, 30 and to divide this into 1,000, that becomes approximately 3%. Clearly, it's more than 0.5% of the total group's revenue. And in this case, Although the text number one is not met, but the text number two is met, and therefore I will conclude that you will need to solve that $30 of the material statement to be a correct one. Otherwise, I will still qualify the groups or the report. Okay, that's all we can do. Now, an other area related to the ISO 600 is to confirm the going concern status of a component. So usually, the parent would make, uh, would make certain investments to buy shares of different components companies and probably to diversify or to reduce its risks. But a lot of subsidiaries inside the group may only be operated as a real co for a specific purpose, so for example, uh, borrowing money or to lending money to other subsidiaries in the group or to lease the asset or to conduct the research and development uh, of the business activity or R&D if you like, doing the marketing and so on. So what we need to do here is to confirm whether or not the component is still a going concern status. Now, if the component has been disposed of by the uh, parent's company, and the parent's company is not affected, okay, uh, when the component has going concern problem. So, for example, uh, we've got a group here, I've got parent and subsidiary. That subsidiary is a loss making subsidiary, it's about to go bust. It's not a going concern entity any longer, but luckily the parent's company disposed off during the year. And the group and the parent is not affected. It's not need to be assuming that liabilities of a subsidiary, so not responsible for bearing subsequent liabilities that a, subs that, a subs that a subsidiary has. So what we need to do from an external auditor's point of view is that we need to obtain written representation from the management and to confirm you've got a plan to dispose of that subsidiary and there will be no impact on our audit report as well. However, if the component or subsidiary has going concern problems, but also affecting our company's going concern because the subsidiary will use that to borrow lots of money and to be involving in the financial market activities. So for example, uh, buying or selling the futures contract, but the parents company or the group and the subsidiary has made significant losses during the year and the parents company need to assume that liability. So all we need to do from the external auditor's point of view, we need to confirm whether or not you made certain disclosures about the uncertainty 
about the uh, going concern status. If you haven't made that disclosure, that is against the IAS number one, is the presentation of the financial statement. Presentation of FFs. So therefore, if you haven't made certain disclosures, you need to qualify the opinion or to make or to issue an adverse opinion if you like. However, if the answer for that is yes, okay, you've made certain disclosures. So what auditors need to do is to include that stuff into the materials uncertainty regarding going concern paragraph in the audit report. Okay? Simply laying out a separate paragraph and telling the investors about this matter. Sometimes the parent promises to help the subsidiaries out because uh, when the going concern problem happens in the subsidiary, it may affect the overall group. And therefore, uh, usually the parents will help this out. Help this out by how? So usually by injecting fund, providing money to help the subsidiary. In other words, we're assuming the subsidiary's liabilities. But from the external auditor's point of view, if you said that, okay, you will help the subsidiary, but I need you to confirm on a piece of paper. That piece of paper is called letter of comfort or you can call it as letter of continuing financial support. So we need to obtain that particular letter from the parent and to make sure that they pledge the financial support for a component for the next 12 months. Because for in assessing whether or not the companies are going concern status, we are assessing whether or not it can operate its business for more than 12 months from the current financial statement year of end. And that's why we obtained the letter of comfort and to please ourselves that the uh, subsidiary will be helped out by the parents' company. And of course, after that, the parents' cash flows forecasts should be inspected very carefully to determine whether or not it has really got the resources to help the subsidiaries out. You can't simply say, OK, I'm going to issue a piece of paper to you, but I haven't got any money at all to help the subsidiaries out, and this is not allowed. The factor of support period should be disclosed in a subsidiary's account as well. So we need to make sure that this has been disclosed properly. Okay. So letter of comfort, okay, not only we need to obtain that piece of paper to confirm that plan, but also we need to confirm whether or not the parents has got enough resources and whether or not this has been disclosed in the subsidiary's account as well. Now, the next area is our responsibility and the involvement in the components audit. First of all, as a group auditor, we express our audit opinion on a group account. So group auditor means the auditor for the parents' company. We are responsible for expressing our overall audit opinion on the group's account. Okay. But remember, we cannot include in our opinion that part of the work is done by the components auditor. We cannot say that. We cannot delegate our responsibilities to the components auditor. That's very important there. Eh? At the same time, we are responsible for overall direction, supervision and performance of a group audit. So direction, which means where to audit and what to audit, and to supervising that throughout the process, for example, whether or not you've got problems, resources, team members not available, we're going to assign another member in the team. And performance, for example, we are talking specifically about the quality control issues and ethical issues when we are auditing the financial statements in the group. When talking about the involvement in the components audit, we need to confirm whether or not we are talking about the component is the significant one or the non-significant one. For the significant okay, component during the planning stage, we need to discuss with management to understand the businesses very carefully, to understand the subsidiaries' businesses very carefully, understanding the risks of material misstatements very carefully by discussing that with the components auditors. And we need to review the components auditors' audit strategy of what to audit and whether or not that's sensible. And also having the planning meetings all documented during the testing stage 
the group auditor or the components auditor shall perform audits using component materiality on the components account. So make sure that uh, we are assessing that materiality to be a, an appropriate level. And also specifying the audit procedures okay, to, uh, assess, to, to, to assess those risks of material misstatements that we've identified during the planning stage. And during the review stage, we review the components auditors working papers to confirm whether or not that would be sensible. If the subsidiary is too small, so in other words, it's not significant at all, so what we need to do as the group auditor, perform analytical procedures and also questionnaires during these three stages to identify risks and to obtain all the evidence, we simply use these uh, substantive analytical procedures by computing ratios uh, and see that. Also preparing questionnaires for example, whether or not you've obtained the written representation from management and so on, okay, if you have obtained that, just tick tick for that and so on. Now, how about for communications with the components auditor from a group's auditor's point of view? Remember, this is a two-way communication, so what we need to do is that the group auditor to the components auditor, so in other words, the parents auditor to the components auditor, what sort of work to be performed, and to define the communication form and content for email reports and so on, to determine the component materiality level and to confirm that it's appropriate, and whether or not you're following the ethical standards, identifying the related parties properly, and whether or not this component auditor has assessed the risks of material misstatements at the group level, uh, especially whether or not it's a going concern entity. From the component auditor to a group is to confirm that the standards are following, uh, are being followed by the components auditors. They are following the uh, standards. Uh, whether or not the components internal control significant deficiencies been identified, and we, and the component auditor need to report this to a group one, and then the components auditor's opinion, the proposed opinion, needs to be discussed with the group auditors as well. And also communications will be to be made with those charged with governance as well. So for example, our decisions of whether or not components are significant, okay, to define the significant components with the audit committee in a group, and also the plant involvement in the group uh, with the components auditor, the quality control issues that we've identified, access to information whether or not it's rejected by the auditor, Okay, so that's very important because from a group auditor's point of view, if I were to uh, need to assess your working papers, you need to provide me with your working papers. You are the component auditor, for example. And also to identify whether or not there will be any fraud okay, uh, involving group or the components management, we need to report them directly to those charged with governance. That's very important there. So far, in the ISO 600 here, we've covered a range of issues. For example, the reliability of the component auditor to determine whether or not we can place reliance on them. For example, by looking at their CV and the standards they are following. And the acceptance of a group auditor before we start to audit the group and to assess the significant component because in calculating the materiality level, if the material misstatements happened in that company, whether or not it will affect the group one. Also the group auditor's responsibility and the involvement okay, in the audit. So we are responsible for the overall audiopedia in the group. And also the communications, there will be a two-way communication and the communication with those charged with governance as well, and these will be the issues in the ISO 600. Now, I'm going to stop this tape, and in the next of our recording, we'll be going through the final area in the ISO 600, will be the audit procedures on consolidation. And I look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye. APC, accounting for your future.